Alright, I've been getting a lot of uh, requests to do a review of my War Sensor G1. Now, this is my second attempt at doing this. I did my first video and it came out to be about 25 minutes, so I think I might have spent a little too much time going over it. So this is the second video. Hopefully I can recap everything fairly quick. Uh, maybe get you a little bit more informative narrowing down of information instead of me rambling on about stuff. So I'm going to jump right into it. So this is the War Sensor G1 Plus, sorry, that I carry in my stock. Um, it's a great gun. I highly recommend it. I am going to list the cons of this gun first now and just get them right out of the way. So the big cons of this gun is when it's all together, it is heavy. This gun weighs more than my Spider LED or my Spider Imagine when it's, you know, fully loaded up and ready to go. Um, the other con that I hear a lot of people online tell me is they leak air because of the pin that they have that pierces the 12 gram. Now, as far as I can tell, I've never had that problem. And, sorry, I've never had that problem. As far as I can tell, the reason that they're bending these pins is they're not taking the time to put the 12 gram cartridges in properly. And most times when they say that this is the problem, it's actually the... Um, cup seal. Sorry about that. Cup seal inside is dirty. So the other con that I'm going to tell you about is getting parts for this gun specifically is a pain in the butt. Uh, War Sensor no longer produces them. I don't even know if War Sensor is still an active company to be honest with you. It's almost impossible to find some of their equipment now. Um, the things you can still find for this gun, however, is the spare magazines. You can get the add-on for the top that'll allow you to put a hopper on it, and you can get the remote wine that'll go through, so you can put a tank on the bottom of it and use this as an actual full-on paintball gun. Now, um, the parts are a little pricey, I guess. Uh, well, no, truly not too bad for what you're getting, I suppose. The the magazines, which is probably going to be the top hit for people that have this gun, uh, they are somewhere between $30 and $50 depending on where you're getting them. Now you can just throw a Google search in for paintball supply usually or a war sensor paintball, something like that, and after a little bit of searching you can usually find a half a dozen places that will sell you the parts. Now the parts that are hard, for, are hard to find for this are some of the internal parts. You can't find them individually, you may have to buy a rebuild kit. Um, even if you have one of these guns, I recommend just spending out the, I think it's 25 bucks or something, buy the rebuild kit and that way you do have the parts because I am, I do foresee it being almost impossible to get some of the specific parts for this gun later on. Now that being said, most of your replacing parts inside are just spider knockoffs, your cup seal, all that stuff. You can just pull it out, look at it. You can usually find a spider part that's going to do the same job and it'll do just as fine. This is a spider knockoff inside. The, uh, the grip you can actually remove, a spider grip will go right on, vice versa. So, I mean, you do got that going for you. Now, some of the pros to this gun that I find is for the size of it, when it's all together, this is a very accurate gun. I mean, um, it shoots about 290 feet a second is what I had this chrono out the last time I was at the field. At 290 feet a second, this is shooting as accurate, or if not more accurate, than my Spiders. Now, don't get me wrong, my Spiders aren't the best guns on the market, and, you know, they are what they are. But, I mean, bang for buck, this shoots just as good as them, if not better. Now, the gun itself comes with a 10-round feed magazine. Sits on top, cap pulls out the back. If you carry the 10 round tubes like I do, you just slip one off the belt, put it in the back, lean it forward, balls come out, put your cap back in, release the spring, and you're ready to go. Simple as that. Now the bolt and the striker, uh, they are kind of proprietary to this gun. You can't really do a whole lot with them. The striker, you might be able to make a spider striker fit, but it, the spider is a little longer. So I mean, it's... Hopefully you never have to replace these two parts. They just slide in, same as the any other gun, straight from the back. Now, what I just did there is not the best way to put a striker and bolt in, of course, because it can ruin your seal there. But for the demonstration purposes, I'm just trying to do this as quickly as possible. Put your guide in, and the spring of this gun is proprietary as well. It does come in a rebuild kit. Uh, I've been running this one for a long time, had no problems with it. Shoots great. 
So, I mean, it's hopefully not going to be one of them parts you're going to be replacing a whole lot. Um, get that down in there. And the adjuster and plug, same thing. It's got the field adjuster. You can crank it out for less feet a second, crank it in for more feet a second. I have it locked at about 280 feet a second at the moment. Uh, put that in. And of course, the one field strippable bolt field stripping bolt, whatever you want to call it. And there you go. All ready to go. Simply pull back, it all falls into the chamber, and away you go. So, it has the slide block safety on it, black nothing, red, fire, and they come with this little pin in the front, which actually sits right in there. Uh, I never use mine. I pull it out. I throw it in the toolbox. To me, it is 100% not necessary. But the idea behind it is you use it to get the 12 gram screw in unlocked. If you have that much pressure on it, that's probably why you're ruining these needle things. So, I don't use mine. I just put it in. Um, as I mentioned, these needle things, if you're destroying them, chances are you are not taking the time. Put your 12 gram in. There's two little openings on the side. Slide it down with your fingers until it's resting against the seal or the, the cup pin there, and then put this on. And once you get resistance on that, you just get a good handhold on it, and it's usually only about a half a turn, and it'll all come together, and you'll be good to go. Now, some people do recommend when you're loading it, or sorry, putting your 12 gram in, keep it cocked. You won't lose any air. I find the amount of air that you lose if you leave it on cocked is pretty much minuscule like you you don't even notice it off 112 gram if i'm firing fast i get 20 accurately before i start losing fps um if i'm only taking like one or two shots and then it's a couple minutes in between i can usually get 30 and not have a problem so i mean that's the quick and dirty version of my review of this gun i'm sure i probably left stuff out if you have any further questions or you want me to explain something a little better, please feel free to give me a shout, uh, leave some comments, shoot me a message, whatever. I will try and do a second part to this video when I get some paint. I currently have none sitting in the house. So once I get a little bit of paint, I'll load this thing up, show you how easy it is to throw a tube through it, and uh, you can see the accuracy and all that for yourselves. So until then, shoot me comments, messages, or otherwise. If not, hopefully you'll see the other video up before around the end of the month, I think that's when I'm heading back out to the field. Alright, thanks guys.